have you ever thought of designing your very own custom, delicious, sexy business club mockups in Blender and be a part of the cool designers club? You are on the right video. Jam. Hey everybody, welcome back to another Jam video. Hope your day is going great so far. Sorry about that intro if it creeped you out a little bit. I'm Rupin from Jam and today I'll be showing you how you could create your very own custom mockups in Blender which you can use to create consistent, rocking presentations for your brand to have a little bit of a customized touch for your creations. If it's your first time on the channel, first of all, welcome. On this channel, I do a variety of design content dedicated to help you and other designers out there. Do me a favor and watch the video till the end. And if you liked it, please check out my other content on the channel too. And without more of the intro, let's talk about some Blender. First off, if you don't have Blender, please go ahead and download it. You'll find the link in the description. The installation is pretty easy to follow. You can also find the images and files I'll be using to create the scene. Go ahead and download them, the link in the description, or even use your own business card. I don't mind. Once you have everything ready, tag along. Okay, so I already have this business card front of back designs that I've made in Adobe Illustrator before. Using the Shield logo that I've done in a previous video, how to design a modern logo using Grid, you'll find the link in the description. I'll probably make a tutorial on how to design a neat business card in the future, however, in this video I'll be covering how you can take your designs and present them nicely. Okay, once you're ready, go ahead and open up a new project document inside of Blender, and this is the most important step guys, alright? I want you to pay close attention, alright, here. You must get rid of this cube at all costs, alright? This is not a joke, I hope you stay safe, you and your family, and you can leave, this is a dangerous process, alright? Take care while you're doing it. Man, I really don't know what's with Blender community and this poor ass cube, dude. Okay, let's get serious now, so before we begin, Go to Edit, Preferences, and then Browse Add-ons tab, and search at the top Images as Planes, and make sure that it's activated. This add-on allows you to take exported images, and insert them in 3D space inside of Blender. Once your add-on is activated, you can go ahead and close this tab. We won't need this boring looking tab anymore, let's get to the fun stuff. Okay, now go ahead and press Shift A on your keyboard, and navigate to Image, and then Images as Planes, and then find your business card on your PC, and open it. You will find that there's this plane that has been imported inside of your 3D space, but it doesn't have the design on it. Alright, now to see the design, go ahead and hold Z, switch to Material Preview, and this allows you to see the material without the lighting. Press R to rotate it however you want to, I'm going to type in 90 and press Y to rotate it on the Y axis. You can do the same with the X and Z axes. If you find that the image is inverted, just rotate the plane 180 degrees on the X or Y axis, and then you will see the correct plane. Now go into Edit Mode by pressing Tab. Press 3 on your keyboard to select faces, you can also press 1 or 2 for vertices or edges. Since this is a plane, it doesn't have any thickness to it. So in order to give it some thickness, I'm going to extrude the plane a little bit by selecting the face and pressing E and dragging my mouse around and clicking once more to apply the extrusion. You will notice that our business card will start to look a little weird. It will look as if it doesn't have any thickness but a gap between two cards. To fix this issue, go to Materials panel on the right here with the business card selected and if you scroll down a little you'll find the settings down here. Change the blend mode from Alpha Blend to Opaque and this should immediately fix the issue. How lovely, now we have this business card, however it only has the front design on it. So now we're going to apply the back two on the other side so we can have a whole ass business card. With the business card selected here, go ahead and click on the plus button to add a new material to our object. Now click on new material down here too and you will see that you've added a new material. You will notice that the material isn't being shown at all here. Where the hell is my material? Oh no! I'm going to switch to the shading workspace here to play with some nodes. Go into edit mode once again and click on one of the faces you want to change and make sure the new material is selected and click assign. You will notice that the new material is applied on the face we selected. Now you can go ahead and browse for your business card's back design and drag it inside of Blender and place it with the other nodes here. Now drag the image from color and connect it to base color and you will see that it's changed to the back of our business card. You will notice that one of the either sides is flipped in the wrong direction. To fix this problem, go to UV Editing Workspace and select the material with the problem in it and in this case it's the front one, go into Edit Mode and select the face with the problem. In the UV Editing tab, select all four corners, press S to scale, tap the X button to scale it on the X axis and then write minus one to flip the image horizontally. Wow, we got ourselves a 3D bulls in this card. Congratulations, you have built yourself a living, breathing business card inside of Blender. Hang tight in there, there's so much more cool stuff to go through. There are two main render engines in Blender that you need to know about, Eevee and Cycles. Eevee is a real-time game-like render engine that works fast, and then there's Cycles Render, and this is to produce more realistic results. But it takes longer. Both have their own uses, however in this video I'll be using Cycles to render this image in the end. That doesn't mean that Eevee is bad at all, just different use. I'll be using Eevee now to set up the lighting and the scene in the beginning because it's much faster to set up a scene and get a grasp of the render before it's done. 
Here I'm doing some renaming for me to avoid much confusion and I'm bringing up the roughness to avoid giving the business cards a glossy look. It's all down to personal preference and whatever it is you're going after. Now we're going to set up the table in which the business cards lie on. Shift A again and then add a new plane. Resize it as big as you want it to be and then press G and move it down a little on the Z axis. Now in Eevee, I'm going to move around this light in the scene to get a sense on how the lighting is going to be in my render. Having good lighting requires a lot of practice in Blender. It comes over time. I'm terrible at lighting anyway. However, I'll try to make something here. Of course, you can put new lights in the scene using Shift A and light up the scene however you want it. You can increase the intensity and the softness of the light through the lighting panel on the right side here. To look from inside your camera view, press numpad 0, which controls how the rendered scene looks like. If you want to move your camera around, you can use GNR as usual, or you can press N and view, and then tick the camera to view option. Now if you navigate in Blender, your camera also moves with you. Place your camera in the scene however you want it, and then untick the option and leave the camera wherever you want it to be. I'm going to add some bevel to the card to make it look slightly more realistic. Tab into edit mode and have to face select option selected, hold alter option on your keyboard and then click once on one of the edges. And it will select all the corners related to the edge that you just selected. Now if you press Ctrl or Command B, you can add some bevel to it. Scroll up or down to increase its definition, however, at smaller scales it's not really that necessary to get much definition to it. If you zoom in at the back, now you'll find that there is very minor texturing issues. You can leave it as it is or you can go again into edit mode and manually assign the textures on the faces however you want them to be. Okay, now that you have the business card ready, let's make a sick composition. I will do the stacking effect now. To make it stack on top of each other, you need to go into Modifiers tab, and from the menu, choose Array Modifier. You can see that you can control the number of business cards from over here. However, it's stacking to the left. If you want to stack it on top of each other, you can do that by changing the value on the Z axis from the settings to 1 or minus 1 depending on the orientation. The business cards are a little thick now. So I'm going to select the main business card and scale it down a little by pressing S and scaling it on the Z axis. Now duplicate over the stack by holding Shift plus D and flip it over and set up your scene by rotating stuff, flipping around, etc. You have full control over your own scene. You can copy mine or do as you wish. Now let's add our cool fabric texture to the table. Okay, when you download the texture, they usually come in multiple images like reflection map, color map, normal map to give a realistic look and feel to the texture instead of just being a normal image. Now drag the color image and put it inside the nodes here like we did with the business card and connect it to base color again. The texture is a little big now so I want to make it repeat across the plane multiple times. To do that, go in the nodes panel and go ahead and press shift A, search for texture coordinates and then search for mapping and put them both. Now arrange them like I'm doing here and drag the generated into the vector and the vector into the image. Now if you move the sliders on the scale, you can see that you can repeat the texture multiple times. I'm going to write 2 on the x and y axis and leave it there. Now I'm going to use the roughness map from the texture file and drag it in here. And also I'll add in the bump map and I'll search for a shader called bump. And then I'll add it in and then I'll plug in the image and then I'll plug it into the normal. And then you will start to see that we have some texture going on. I'm going to add some obstacle in front of the light to produce more natural lighting. You can choose to ignore this process, however I think it adds more realistic spice to the whole render. And I'll be adding another light source on the other side of the image to balance it out by duplicating it. You can control the softness of the shadow by selecting the light and then adjusting the radius and the intensity of the light. Now if you change the render engine to cycles, you can start to see how it's coming along nicely. I'm going to make a new collection for each pile because I'll be applying an array modifier now and separate each card on its own. So we'll have a bunch of cards to work with. After applying the array modifier go inside of edit mode and select all by pressing A and then press B and separate by loose parts. Everything should be separated now. With everything selected in object mode not edit mode, press F3 and search randomize transform and click it. You can play around with the settings here to randomly fumble around the cards so they look imperfect. Which adds more realism to the whole piece. Make sure that the change is very subtle. Now do the same with the other pile as well. We're done for the most part, but I'm going to give the paper some texture, instead of looking so plain. Go to the shading workspace again and then add a noise map. And connect it to the base color to see the noise. Then add a color ramp in between the connections to see the noise in black and white. Play around with the values a little bit till you're satisfied and then insert a bump map, connect it, then put it inside the normal node. It will take some time, but look what have we now. Now copy everything we just did and paste it into the front cover's texture shading. We are almost done with the tutorial, now I'm going to put in this 3D plan that I found on Sketchfab by Sligo Creatures. Sorry if I spelled your name wrong, I will leave the link in the description, go and support them. 
You can find multiple other cool 3D models and props for your scene on Sketchfab if you want to make something more specific. Now import the model we downloaded, which comes in FBX format, head over to the file, import, and choose FBX. Locate the file and then import it. You may notice that the texture doesn't work. Open the folder that we just downloaded and you'll find that it comes with a texture folder. Just like we had done with the fabric and table, do the same with the leaves here, apply the maps as they are and you'll see that the UV is already unwrapped and the texture will work in perfectly. Organize it around and place it wherever you want to in the scene. I'm going to put it here so we could mess with the lighting a little bit, like the pepperoni on the pizza. Once you have your camera set correctly, ready to render, now open the render tab on the right and let's play with some render settings. For more realistic renders, make sure that Cycles is on and make sure you're using your GPU to render, multiply render samples by 4, go down to performance and multiply the X and Y tile sizes by 4 to help render faster, and if you go down into color management, you can see different options to render with, low contrast, high contrast, you have a bunch of different options to play with in order to make the scene however you imagine it. You do you, however I'm going for medium low contrast. Lastly, I'll add some depth of field to the image by selecting the camera and going to the camera settings, ticking the depth of field and then click on the eyedropper tool here and select the object you want to focus on. Decrease the f-stop if you want to make the image more blurry around the subject, however I won't play much with it. And you can go ahead and finally press F12 to render the image. You're finally at the end of the Booziness Card mockup tutorial. You can go ahead and design your personal presentations using custom mockups. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please jam that like button and make sure to share this video around with other designers who would find it useful. And do not forget to subscribe for future jam content. I'd also like to know, do you like Blender tutorials? Would you like me to make other product packaging stuff on Blender? Let me know down in the comments. Anyhow, I'll be seeing you later. Have a goddamn pepperoni.